All right, I got a lot going on here, so I'm gonna try and be somewhat in the frame. I thought I'd make a little update video real quick about the Iris flight since some people have been asking. It's gonna be in the second part of my LDRS video that will be live this Sunday. Um, also, if you wanna see the full LDRS video, uh, you can go to rocketvlogs.square.site. I'll put the link in the description. For $10, I'll send you a download link for the whole hour long, hour and 18 minute long uh, documentary thing I did. And uh, there's no ads, and if you download it, you get to see it in full resolution. And you give me your address, I'll send you a PCP and Rocket Vlog sticker until I run out of them. I think I have like 15 more of each. If you don't know what this is, this is a 66% scale or two thirds scale Iris sounding rocket. It's a rocket that was used I think only for like two years in the early 60s by the Atlantic Research Corporation. Um, this is all fiberglass save for a couple components. It's got quarter inch G10 fins and I had a six inch motor mount because I built it when I was 17 for some reason was convinced I was going to be flying an O motor right after I got my level three which didn't even end up happening until I was 25. It flew at LDRS 39 in Utah on an N2220 Dark Matter and some people have been asking how it went, so I thought I'd do a quick little video for you guys. Regarding the motor, I love Sparky motors. I'm a really big fan of the old AMW skid marks. Some Aerotech motors hit like a skid mark and some of them don't. You really want it to just be super growly and loud and unfortunately my N2220 wasn't like that. There was an N2220 at LDRS that flew that sounded really good. It's just kind of hit or miss. I don't know if it's to do with them using iron instead of titanium sponge like they did at AMW which from what I understand you can't really get anymore. Could be the graphite nozzles versus the phenolic ones. I don't know. So it was a little disappointing by how loud it wasn't, but it was still an awesome motor and looked really good on video and in all the pictures and stuff. And it's still a great flight. Uh, Rock Sim said about 8,500 feet, but right when it left the pad, it kicked over a good amount, possibly due to wind because of these giant fins. And uh, we made it to about 6,500 feet. We successfully deployed the drogue parachute. Um, not without incident though, it did push my adapter system out, it actually pulled all of the epoxied and barrel nuts out of the rear ring inside the rocket. So uh, that's the first thing that's going to be repaired, there's a couple more things. Um, but the drug came out and uh, you can actually see it on the onboard footage. You can see in the footage when it's under drug that the drug was actually a little too small and these giant fins create so much drag that the fin can was lifting up above the nose cone of the upper section. And then when the shock cord tugged it, it would line up and streamline and start coming down and go right past the nose cone in the upper section. So as a result, on one of those passes, the fin can hit the nose cone and there's actually a hole in my uh, seven and a half inch gel coat nose cone. So that shouldn't be too hard to fix. I'll probably put some fiberglass cloth on the inside there and then we'll use some West Systems of colloidal silica to fill this and there's a bunch of other dings that we might as well fill while we're there not to mention the gel coat only tip uh, chipped so I'll just sand that smooth into the right shape again we'll repaint it that'll be fine 
Uh, next up was the eight rivets that I used to hold the coupler into the upper section. Uh, no match for an eight gram black powder charge. It sheared all eight of them like they weren't even there. But luckily it held in just long enough for it to throw the nose cone off so the main chute came out, which is good. The bad part about that is that shoe was a little too small for the Bonneville Salt Flats because the ground's pretty hard out there. So uh, simulated or based on sky angles information, it was a sky angle cert 3XL. It's supposed to bring this rocket around 23 to 25 feet per second, which is fine for most of the places where I fly and most of the small rocks that I fly. But this is my first time with something this big. Uh, so we learned a lot of lessons this time. Um, when it hit the ground, it landed solely on the corner of one of the fins. <laughs> I really wish it would have like landed on the nozzle on the motor or something like that, but it landed solely on the corner of one of the fins and popped the fillet and broke it off the motor tube. So the iris needs some repairs and improvements. Um, unfortunately, I think the easiest solution for this is going to be to do away with the six inch mount. We'll glue the fin back in and I'll build a 98 millimeter motor mount around the six inch tube. Alternatively, I could look into pulling that six inch tube that I homemade when I was 17 out of there and putting a fiberglass one in there. But I don't really think I need a six inch mount in a seven and a half inch rocket after going 6,500 feet on a real low impulse end. I mean, a big, a big end would probably do over 10 in this thing. And that's, that's all we need. But Overall, it was pretty good. The rocket's still alive, fairly easy to fix, nothing too extreme. I'm going to have to do some repainting, which is kind of a pain because just the paint scheme's a little m bit much. But uh, the funny part is I actually have another one of these irises. Uh, shout out Dave and Jay once again from Lock Precision. <laughs> they sent me one of their... Uh... Oh. Find your airspace. This is a... Dude, these stickers are sick. I'm going to put these on the paper iris. So I actually have another seven and a half inch iris that we need to finish and I'm going to try to have it done at least ready to fly, maybe not necessarily painted for uh, Tripoli Vegas or October because the lock guys are going to be down there. And um, yeah, so we got some repairs to do, but it's not the end of the world. It didn't hurt anybody. I was really paranoid that these charges were not going to work for some reason. No main chute was going to come out and I was about to drop a 65 pound rocket after the motor burned out onto the crowd and then kind of a little nightmare situation where it was coming in right over the crowd with the drone shootout but the man came out and it pulled it back inside the flight line so it landed nice and close so that was really cool but uh overall rockets mostly okay motor case is fine that's my primary concern it's pretty expensive and 2220 good motor i wish i would have had a little bit more crackle to it but um i think maybe an n2000 or n3300 would be pretty exciting in this thing and uh, I think we might try and do an N3300 in this 6 inch Dark Star back here this fall maybe we'll see they're not cheap <laughs> but uh, yeah so what's interesting is that I'll actually be taking these big rocket lessons we just learned with this flight because uh, I kind of alluded to this before but this is not going to be the biggest rocket on the channel anymore my friend Taylor and I are building something pretty ridiculous so uh yeah youtube tells me about 80 percent of the people who watch these videos aren't subscribed so if you're watching this right now and you aren't subscribed please press the subscribe button turn the notifications on it doesn't cost you anything and press the like button too i don't like to sound like typical youtube guy but it actually does help a lot and the more we can grow this channel the more income i'll have to throw at rockets and we can just make some crazy stuff happen so uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all the interest in this rocket. The 17-year-old uh, ego that's still in me is pretty excited that you guys are so excited about it because, let's be honest, I just wanted to build it to show off, basically. But it flew. Now I can say it's no longer just a garage queen at this point, and uh, it's exciting. It was fun, so I want to rebuild it. We'll fly it again, maybe on a really hard-hitting research end motor or something like that. We'll get the other iris ready to go. And uh, all these other projects we got going on. It's getting crazy fast, but uh, at any rate, I appreciate you guys sticking around. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.